Good morning, Faith Bible Church. Good to see everybody today. We are blessed. We have the sun shining. We have an opportunity to come before Jesus, exalt his name in praise and worship, and listen to some great preaching. You happy to be here this morning? All right. Maybe some, Pastor Paul's excited. You happy to be here this morning? All right. Now we're connected. We're ready to go. Stand with me. Grab your songbook. We're turning to number 14. I'll fly away. Number 14. Let's shout it out this morning. Number 14. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by the by, one day to meet Jesus face to face. Turn with me now to number 152. Number 152, revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah. this morning. Go ahead, say hello to one another.
All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Good to see everybody here. Welcome to our visitors. If this is your first time, thank you for being here at Faith Bible Church. We're glad you are here. We'll just make our way back to our seats now, and we will have some announcements. Good morning, ladies. Ladies Bible study is this coming Tuesday night at 7. And uh, long before the pilgrims celebrated their first Thanksgiving at Plymouth over 400 years ago, the uh, concept of thanksgiving to the Lord was already well established, uh, both between God and Israel and between God and his church. And throughout scripture, both in the Old and New Testament, we see repeatedly two different aspects to giving thanksgiving to the Lord, uh, offering the sacrifices of thanksgiving as well as the praises of thanksgiving. And God desires uh, thanksgiving from his people, and it is our privilege to give the Lord our sacrifices and praises of thanksgiving. And if we have a right heart and perspective of who God is and all he's done for us on the cross and continues to do uh, on our behalf today, then what better way to spend the time and breath we have left on this earth than to give him the sacrifices and the praises of thanksgiving. So this coming Tuesday at 7, we're going to examine scripture both in the Old and New Testament on what it looks like to offer the sacrifices and praises of thanksgiving to the Lord uh, so that we can be encouraged to wholeheartedly worship him with a thankful heart. So we hope you can come join us this Tuesday at 7. As always, you're welcome to bring a friend and teen girls. You are welcome too. Thank you, Alicia. All right, so we are going to continue on with some announcements now. Um, make sure I have them all here for you. So, all right, so uh, we listened to the kids' choir last week, which was a blessing as always. Practice will resume today, parents, so around 1140. Please make sure they are in the, um, the blue room in the, in the hallway there and uh, ready to go for the next song that is going to be sung in kids' choir. Um, Emily Zifla is not here this morning, but she does still have a table set up in the back for Operation Christmas Child. There are going to be some young adults manning that table uh, today. Uh, there's still plenty of time to pack a shoe box for Operation Christmas Child. Um, the shoe boxes, the labels, uh, the idea lists are all located on that table in the back of the sanctuary. And the completed boxes are due back uh, to the church on Sunday, uh, uh, November 19th. Okay, um, There are... There is a tote label underneath the table for any extra things that maybe don't fit in your box that you buy. Um, and that's okay because on the 19th, the young adults are going to spend some time packing extra boxes and using those extra supplies to fill those shoe boxes up. So it's okay if you don't uh, have room in your box. Just put it under that tote um, once you get some items there for, for the shoe box. So if you have any questions, there will be some young adults back there today. And then Emily uh, will be back next week to answer any further questions you have. If you notice on the way in, you saw, you saw the, uh, the missions card sale going on. That's going to be continuing after service today. So if you would like to uh, purchase some, some uh, uh, greeting cards, some handmade greeting cards, that uh, money is going to go to missions, and it is a $2 donation. If you have any questions, Marilyn Dijak will be back there after service to help you with that. On Friday, November 10th, uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the back table for the Chili and Chillin' Chili cook-off, all right? That's going to be for our next uh, 30s and 40s event. Uh, sorry, Brenda, I don't do justice to it like you do. You do a way better job at that. But anyway, it's the Chili and Chillin' Chili Cook-Off, all right? 30s and 40s uh, event at, here at the church at 6 p.m. on Friday, November 10th. Uh, there, there is a sign-up sheet for that, so make sure you sign up if you are attending that. And then lastly, I'm going to call our ushers up to take our offering at this time. And while they're coming up, I will say Saturday, November 18th, will be the next Faith Keepers event. That's going to be a gingerbread house competition. Okay, If you're interested in doing that, there's a sign-up sheet on the back table. That'll be at 1 p.m. on November 18th. And uh, please see Jeannie with any questions on that. I'm going to have... Peter, pray for our offering, and then we will hear our special. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, thank you for the day. Lord, pray many blessings upon us just for the beautiful morning you gave to us and for the opportunity to come to church. Lord, I pray your blessings now upon the offering. I pray to be used for your glory, for your honor. Lord, I pray you bless this church. Lord, pray bless the people who would give. Lord, I pray you be glorified in all that is said and done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I 
faced a mountain, a trial of stone. Down in the valley, I felt so alone, fearing that Satan would tempt and abuse. But God sends me comfort with this simple Amen. As always, ladies, wonderful job. Thank you for your time and commitment to singing for the Lord. Abby, thank you. You do a great job with those young ladies. Thank you for putting all the effort in. I know that it's a lot getting everybody together. There's a lot. That group keeps growing, if you haven't noticed. I think it started with like four or five young ladies, and now we're up to, what was up here, almost 10 this morning, something like that. What a blessing. We're going to stand now. We're going to sing. Would you grab your songbook? Turning to number 25. Number 25 at Calvary. Get our hearts fired up before the preacher comes up and preaches. Number 25. Years I spent in Calvary and pride. Caring not my Lord was crucified. No.
Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden is so found liberty. At Calvary. Hey man, great singing. You may be seated. Man. All right. Am I up, Tom? This it? Okay. I wasn't sure about that. Anyway, good morning. It is good to see everyone here this morning. Thank you very much. That was a great song service. Uh, I can hear that extra brass. That was awesome. Thank you, Justin. And uh, it's good to see Wendy up here on the violin as well. And we have so much talent. You're doing a great job, Tom, getting this talent together, man. It's such a blessing to see that. So, uh, But it's good to see you here this morning. Thanks for Thanks for being here. We have a See, this is a great crowd. We have um, a lot of people uh, out of town today for whatever reason. Some, some are sick. It's just one of those days, but this is a great crowd. Uh, we had uh, October, we came in at our highest attendance average ever. So Sunday morning attendance in October was 291. And uh, that, that is by far our best. So... Uh, so we're continuing to trend in the right direction. The offerings were just off the charts. Thank you for your generosity. Uh, able to do a lot of things that are, 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 ex are expensive normally, you know, for, but, but honestly, the Lord continues to take very good care of us and, and our finances, and uh, so thank you. And that's, that's credit to all of you and your generosity. Uh, we're going to be in Mark 15 this morning, and so... Dave mentioned the things coming up, 30s and 40s, chili cook-off. My wife and I will be here uh, to that late. I've got to speak to a, uh, another church, and pastor asked me to speak to his leadership team that night. But when I'm finished with that, where it's not going to be far from here, or the restaurant's not far from here, when I, I'm going to crash that event. So I hope that you'll be able to come to that, 30s and 40s. Listen, help me out too, people, with the gingerbread. 50 and over, help me with the gingerbread stuff, will you? All right, so I'm going to be, uh, we're going to be here that Saturday at 1 o'clock uh, having a gingerbread contest of making the houses and all that. So I'm, my wife signed me up. If you don't know what you're doing, you will be assigned a team. There's going to be at least teams of four anyway, uh, four people per team, or you can make your own team, or you can... But uh, that ought to be interesting. You're, you're going to want to see what I've got in store for my gingerbread house. I don't know what that is, but you're going to want to see it anyway. And the shoe boxes, thank you for taking care of. Uh, again, the Samaritan's Purse uh, is a great organization, a great Christian organization. They do a lot of good around the world in different dis natural disasters and things. Uh, they have the gospel emphasis in these shoe boxes when they go to whatever country they end up in. And they'll tell you, they'll track it for you, uh, they'll get a shoebox full of toys, they'll get a gospel tract, and they will get the gospel presentation to them. People will be saved. This is your opportunity to be a missionary all right, around the world by, by uh, participating in that. And you can get more information, of course, at the back table. So uh, I, will, I do want to just uh, mention this Friday, I believe it is, is Veterans Day, as always, I, we, we support, very much so support uh, military here. We very much support our police officers and, and uh, uh, first responders and such. So, but if you're a veteran of the United States military, past or present, would you just stand, please, for us to acknowledge you this week and to thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Without you folks and your investment, we would not be free as we are today. So we just thank you for uh, your service to, to all of us. It is a tremendous blessing. Uh, this, um, this Tuesday is Election Day. Okay, Now, you ought to, as a Christian, you ought to engage in voting. Okay? Uh, you should pray about how you're going to vote. Okay, um, for us locally, it's more of a local thing uh, this year. Uh, my friend, 
Mark Cassini is running for county executive against incumbent Adam Bello. And uh, I just want you to know, Mark is a good man of character. He was my town supervisor for nine years and did a stellar job in the town of Gates. He was my county ledge before that for many years. And I want you to know that if he gets elected, I've met with him several times and he wants me to convey this to you, that he is going to incorporate pastors and churches to help with the mess in this county. So that is, that is a, he said that we're going to be his knights of the round table. So I want you to pray about that and pray about who you should vote for with that election. And it wouldn't hurt also to have an administration uh, that gets Albany off of our back here. So in case we ever have to have another COVID or something of that effect, it would probably be run much differently than it was four years ago. So just you, you, you keep those things in prayer. You vote how you vote. You vote, but you vote. That's the most important thing. You, you vote when you pray about that. It's, it's a, a freedom, a right to do so, and nobody else needs to know how you're going to vote. But you just make sure you get out there and vote for all of the um, important uh, local elections here this year. All right, let me see. What else do we have here? I think that's about it. Um, lost and found Bibles in the box in the closet. That's getting a little full, and I'm about to unload a couple of those, so you might want to just check. If you're missing a Bible or your child's missing a Bible, pretty soon it's going to go to somebody who appreciates it. All right, Mark 15 this morning. And we've come down to verse number 25. Verses 25, I'm going to read verses 25 to 32. And we're speaking of Jesus and the crucifixion. We've been continuing this series, taking uh, sections of verses. And it continues here in verse number 25. And it says, and it was the third hour and they crucified him. And the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days? Save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking, said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. Now, Father in heaven, we thank you for uh, the day today, another day, day to have the health and uh, freedom to come and to assemble. Thank you for our military uh, making this possible for us as well. Thank you for your blessing uh, on us, on our country, giving us liberty, be able to stand here, Lord, and, and speak and uh, not worry about anybody coming in today to, uh, to arrest us or any such thing. I pray you bless our veterans, Lord, just, uh, just grateful for them. And just pray you bless now this time in your word, we pray and ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. So here we continue with the crucifixion. It's the, uh, a Roman time in verse 25, the third hour. It's 9 a.m. when they crucify Jesus. And for the next six hours, you'll see that in verse 33, for the next six hours, he's on the cross and he has to put up with a lot of negative accusations, mockery, gossip about him to justify their position of killing an innocent man. They put him between two guilty thieves, and the scripture is fulfilled that he was numbered with the transgressors. That's Isaiah 53, verse 12. That's 700 years prior this was written. It says, he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Now you say, what's a transgressor? The Bible says that sin is the transgression of the law. Uh, a transgressor is a wicked, unlawful person, a violator of God's law, someone who has departed from being lawful. 
And Jesus, who never sinned, it says, is numbered with the transgressors. In other words, he's on their roll call. Hey, transgressors, stand up. It's transgressors, who are you? Wave at us, transgressors. And Jesus was numbered with the transgressors, even though he had never sinned. And just like last week, we looked at how Jesus went to deadly places for us. He's placed in the middle of transgressors, so we don't have to be. Um, I, I mean, imagine something like this, being, uh, being dropped in the middle of Attica prison, you, a lawful abiding citizen, being dropped in the middle of all the transgressors, the thieves, the murderers, the drug dealers, the gang members, just you just being plopped right down in the middle of people. That's why Christ is on the cross with bad company. The transgressors, the, the murderers. And he did that so we wouldn't have to. We've been called, Christian, we have been called to a different life, a fellowship with other believers and to be separated from people who are unlawful and live outside of God's moral law. He was numbered with them that we might escape them. The Bible says we are to, as Christians, we are to know how to possess our vessel ourselves, how to possess our vessel in sanctification and honor, meaning being separated uh, from transgressors. Uh, we are to be honored, in sanctification and honor, to be meet or appropriate for the master's use, the Bible says. We don't have to be numbered with them because he was, that we might escape them. This is why we do what we do. This is why Christian culture is Christian culture. This is why we're here today. We're here with believers today, right? Here we are. We get together. We, we, can, we um, encourage one another to assemble together whenever we have the opportunity. It's why we'll have a Friday night activity. It's why we'll have the gingerbread making activity. This is why we'll do all sorts of things. And then home Bible study for the young adults. And the teen Bible studies. And the Thursday night Awana. And the Thursday night teens. And all the things that we do. We do because we don't need to be numbered with the transgressors all the time. We come together. That's why we have. That's why there are Christian schools. Christian schools gives people give people an opportunity to get out of the the the, the, the transgressors. Uh, homeschool gives them that opportunity. That's why we have these things that we have because we don't want to be numbered with the transgressors. Now I know we can't get away from the ungodly, but we don't have to be numbered with them. That's the point. You have to be numbered with them and participate in their transgressions. So we look at what happens to Jesus here when numbered with them, and what would happen to us when we are? I'm going to say if. I'm going to say for a lot of Christians today in, in what's considered Christianity, I'm going to say what happens when we are numbered with the transgressors? Because there's an awful lot of that that goes on today in Christianity. What happened to Christ? First, and this will happen to you, you'll be labeled by them. You'll get a label. You, he got a title and a sign given him of an accusation that accused him of his crime, claiming to be the king of the Jews. Now, it said king of the Jews. They went to Pilate and the other gospels. You can see they go to Pilate and say, don't say that he is the king of the Jews. Say that he said he was the king of the Jews. That's what their problem is with him, that he said he was the king of the Jews. Now, we know he's the king of the kings, right? We know. But... Pilate says, what I have written, I have written. So kind of in your face, sorry. But they still falsely accuse him here. They label him as something that they believe he, he, that he was not. They label him, he, he's false king of the Jews. He says he was king of the Jews. They give him that false label, a title, a sign, uh, when, which they see as untrue and a false claim. They see it that way. They labeled him as they saw him, not as he really was. Now, Christian, when we're numbered with the wrong crowd, they will label you as they see you. And maybe not as God sees you. 
They might call you a joke. They might say, yeah, you're yeah, a joke. You're one of those spiritual sissies. You're one of those churchgoers. You know, you hypocrite. You're one of those holier than thou. You're a loser. You're not taken seriously. You're... This is what happens when you get numbered with the transgressors. They'll label you. They see you not as God does. I mean, Paul wrote about himself. Paul, the apostle in 1 Timothy 1, 13 says, Before I was, before I was a blasphemer, persecutor, injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So Paul says, yeah, listen, before I became a believer, I was all those things that they said that I was. Because imagine Paul, he got saved and got away from the number of the transgressors, and they're saying to him, Paul, who do you think you are? I mean, you murdered these people. What are you doing, you hypocrite, right? I can imagine the label that Paul must have gotten when he got saved. In fact, the Christians were hesitant in the book of Acts. They're like, this guy? We're not getting near this guy. Well, he had to prove himself. He had he'd, he'd gotten a label, but as a Christian, it was different. It was his, his testimony before his conversion, not after his conversion, because he says he did them in ignorance and in unbelief. We've all done things probably uh, not proud of and things in unbelief and all that. He hung with the transgressors and transgressed, but he wasn't saved. Christian, listen to me, he wasn't saved. What's your excuse for being numbered with the transgressors? What's your excuse for a bad reputation? You're saved. You're doing it not in ignorance. You're doing it not in unbelief. We can't be numbered with the transgressors. Some believers are labeled. Some believers are labeled as blasphemers and fornicators and double-minded and wishy-washy and worldly and lazy, all because they are numbered with the transgressors by their own choice. Folks, listen. If, you're, if you name the name of Christ, if you're saved, I mean, if you're born again, I mean, you know Christ is your Savior. Listen, uh, don't, please don't brag on your sin. Please don't brag on your sin. Please don't go out and boast of something that you do opposite of what you just heard on Sunday morning. Please don't do that. You're being numbered with the transgressors. Numbered with the transgressors. Because you're hanging in the middle of them and you're labeled as such. But I want you to understand this. If you're saved... Jesus says that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, a follower of Jesus Christ. So if you're labeled as anything other than that, you need to shed that label. You need to shed that label. You need to shed that label. That false label that you're not supposed to have given to you by the transgressors because you're numbered with them. If somebody looks at somebody else as a Christian and says, I know them, they're a hypocrite. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But if you are, then just stop being numbered with the transgressors. If somebody looks at you and says, oh, yeah, they go to church, they're a drunk. I saw them in the bar the other night. Uh, you might want to not be labeled like that. Somebody says, oh, that person, they got a filthy mouth, man. They're a Christian, they got a filthy mouth. Shame on you if that's the case. Shed that label. You can. You can. It's up to you. What happens is we go right in between the transgressors. (laughs) Here I am, between the transgressors. How shall I be labeled? Oh, I know Christ. I go to church. I'm saved. Right between the transgressors. Jesus did that, so we don't do that. So we don't do that. Being numbered with the transgressors, number one, it'll label you. It'll label you. Secondly is this. 
it'll get you railed on. Verses 29 and verse 30, they railed on Jesus. I mean, they mocked, they made fun of him, they pecked on him, they bullied him, whatever else you want to call it. They tortured him. Jesus knows what it's like to be railed on. To be disliked, in fact, even to be hated. So Christian, the next time that you whine about being bullied, picked on, all this stuff by the unbelieving crowd, just so you know, that's what they do. They rail on us. Get over it. Suck it up, buttercup. Come on. You can do it. You're okay. You'll be all right. Get some skin thicken up a little bit. All right? You don't need to make them, allow them to ruin your day or your life, okay? Jesus was railed on. You're not alone if you feel this way. But when you're numbered with the transgressors, yes, it's going to be worse than you can imagine because you number them. Listen, you may, you may be a believer and you may go to school, uh, private, public, College, you may go to school with people who aren't believers. You're numbered there, so yeah, you're going to get railed on. You may work in a workplace, a factory, or something like that, where it's filled with cursing and filled with taking the Lord's name in vain and filled with all this other stuff, and yeah, you're going to get railed on there. Uh, you may hang around with different peers that you probably may not want to do that, you know, and the certain people that they are. And let me tell you something, if you do, you're going to get railed on. Because that's what the transgressors do. That's what they do. Even the two, listen, Christ is between two thieves, and it says they railed on him too. They're about to die. He's about to die. And it starts off where they both rail on him, and then later on we learn that one of them, one of them gets saved because Jesus still loves them. And still witnesses to him. And one of them repents and gets, comes to Christ on the cross. But they still railed on him. Now you might think it's bad, Christian. Uh, listen. This is our, our, our culture, right? The, guy, the preacher gets up here and spits. I just spit on my paper just now. I, I truly just did. There it is, right there. All right. <laughs> You get you you might believe, man, it's bad when the preacher rails on your sin or your lifestyle. Oh, I can't believe he always says that. What's the matter with him preaching on my lifestyle? What's the matter? He's always... Or when other Christians do the same. Even they, you know, because you're in sin. And they're like, man, you ought not to do that or whatever the case is. You might sit here as many do and many tell me all the time, and this has been going on for years of all the years of preaching that there's ever been in Christianity. You might say, he's talking to me. Preacher, you are talking to me. Good, I guess. I mean, I wasn't, but if I was, then that's good. Don't take it like, ah, oh, he's railing, how come he's railing? You think that's the railing? Because if I'm preaching the truth, the problem's with you. <laughs> if I rail on your sin, it's because I love Jesus and I love you and I care about you. Now, when you go find common ground or solace with transgressors, just remember, oh, preacher, oh, they rail on you. All they do is rail on us at church. That's all they do. They want this standard, that. They want this and that. Listen, go on out there with the transgressors and see who rails on you harder. They don't do it out of love. They don't do it because they care about you. They want to use and abuse you and take you down to their level. Folks, there's no good support system with the transgressors. Because they don't have the wisdom of God. The Bible says they have the foolishness of the world. So where do we go for our support, for our counsel? You know, Listen, the only, sometimes the only reason I watch news is to, it's funny. 
You know what the big crisis is right now? Top stories on the news. There's a milk carton shortage in schools. About the third time I heard that, I was paid more attention. I'm like, this can't. This is, is this a crisis? They're short milk cartons. And they did this big report, and I'm listening going, what's he going to say? And my wife's over there going, just pour it in the glasses, stupid. She didn't say stupid, but, but she said, just pour it in glasses. You know, so, they're, so they're talking about the milk carton shortage. What are we going to do? And you get this, this worker in the schools on there, and you know, we've got a plan. We've got a plan we're going to set up where we can pour it into cups, and we've we got a plan to worry. We're not going to worry too much about the spillage. We've got a plan for the spillage. For the spillage? Wow! These are crises? Milk card shortage. That's who I want to go for counsel? That's where I want to go? Got a video. J Mac, thank you for the video. He gets upset if I don't give him credit when I get the videos. I got you, buddy. We'll give credit. I'll put them up here on the screen next week. Credits, too. This is a Webster School Board meeting. Webster, New York. What, 15 miles from here? Webster, New York. School Board meeting. Mother eloquently addressing the school board because her daughter, young teen, was in there locker room, dressing room, and a male who identifies as a female changed in the same room. Parents never knew about it. They weren't warned about it. They weren't told about it. Wouldn't know anything if it wasn't for the daughter to go home and tell her mother, but they also... You know what they did when the girls complained? They call them into a meeting with all of the inclusivity people and all this stuff, and they basically try to brainwash them out of this. They did that without the parents as well. And in this address to the school board, she, she gave cases of the sexual assault that is happening because boys are in girls' locker rooms. And there's over 400 cases reported in the United States. Folks, listen to me. Wake up. They don't want you to know that stuff. You better wake up. You better find out what's going on in the classroom. Someone else was telling me the other day that a, a parent inquired about a, a special... Uh, class that they were having and, and teaching about some of this stuff. And the parents said, well, what are you guys going to be teaching? And the response was, we don't have to tell you that. Wow. My, what's my point? I'm going to go there for my counsel? I'm going to be numbered with the transgressors in this garbage? Nothing good's going to come out of that. You're going to go to your unsaved relatives. Well, I was talking to my sister today. I'm not, you know, and that, they think this. They're not saved. Jesus says of this world, his kingdom is not of this world. Jesus said there is a prince of this world who will eventually be cast out. He said there's coming judgment of this world. The Bible calls Satan the god of this world. The Bible talks about the course of this world, which is different from the course we're supposed to be on. We are told not to be conformed to this world. We, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, we don't speak of the wisdom of this world because it comes to naught. Nothing. It comes to nothing. We don't speak of the wisdom of this world because it's actually foolishness. 
So let me ask you, is it better to get counsel from the Lord or from the transgressors? Now listen, what I'm about to say, I'm not going to umbrella this whole thing like it's all bad, but I'm going to tell you for the most part it is. Why do we run to secular psychologists who don't know Christ? Now I think, by the way, I think we need Christian psychologists who could have a great ministry and get paid for it. But I'm not going to run to the transgressors for that stuff. That numbers us with the transgressors. You know, psychology literally means soul words. Soul words. Words for the soul. I think we have some psychology, don't we? Soul words. Words for the soul. The word of God. Do they really have better words for the soul than God does? All they'll do is rail on you and your belief system because you've been numbered with them. That's why. Ask anybody who takes who goes to secular college. Mandatory psychology classes. Well, I think I'm just going to be, uh, I'm going to go for, to be, to, to, for plumbing in HVAC. Uh, you better take the psychology course. I'll be an electrical engineer. Yeah, you got to take this course or two. I'm going to be an architect. Well, you need, need to take this course. I'm going to be an engineer. I'm going to take, you need to take psychology courses. Why? So you can rail on me. That's why. Listen to Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to read a few verses. Ephesians 2, 2 says, To the believer, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past and the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But, but God, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's the believer. In times past, we walked a different course, the course of this world. Now we don't. We walk a different course, right? We walk a course to the cross. This is the course we walk. To the cross. We go forward. We follow Jesus. We get as close as we can to Christ. This is the course that we walk. In times past, we walked according to the course of this world. The course of this world, that's a backward course. It's not a forward course. We go sideways, backward, spun around, back, 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 fall down, get up, all those different things. That's a different course. It's called the course of this world. We don't do, walk that course anymore. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience or the spirit that works in the transgressors that were not to be numbered with. That spirit. We've had our conversation or our lifestyle in times past with them. Our lifestyle was like theirs. When we were children of wrath and disobedience. I'm not a children of wrath or disobedience anymore. God saved us, made us alive, resurrected us from the spiritually dead, and now we sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do you know where you are on God's roll call? You're in heavenly places. You're as good as there right now. You've got a seat reserved there. He made us to sit presently in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
That's eternal security, folks. That's why once saved, always saved, when you're genuinely saved. I'm made to sit right now in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. My roll call is there, not with the transgressors. That's not where it is. We're no longer numbered with them. They're dead and they're transgressors. We're numbered with the saints in heaven. And if you go back to the transgressors, all they will do is rail on you and give you bad counsel. That's what they're designed to do. That's what they're supposed to do. That's why they report to the prince of the power of the air, Satan himself. Being numbered with the transgressors gets you railed on. Gives you a false label. Then we get rattled on. And then this is the last thing that being numbered with transgressors does. As Jesus did for us, it leaves you, it just leaves you isolated. It makes you feel, you number with the transgressor, man, it makes you feel like you don't belong anywhere. Leaves you isolated. Verses 31, 32, Jesus was alone on the cross while his enemies were mocking, talking among themselves, gossiping, misrepresenting him, reviling him. Reviling him means they made him a reproach. They were like, ah, he's disgusting. This is filthy. He's, a, he's no good. He saved others, but he can't save himself. Come on down from the cross, Jesus, king of the Jews. Come on down. Let me see. Then I'll believe if you come down. They're expressing their disapproval of him. And the things that he taught. They're isolating, abandoning him, throwing him to the wolves, trying to discredit all that he taught. When you teach truth, you are going to be isolated from the transgressors. They don't want you. They, you try to interact with them, they will make you feel unworthy express their disapproval, throw you to the dogs. They eat their own, as we say oftentimes. They eat their own. We, we say that a lot about parties, like uh, political parties. Oh, the Democrats, the liberals, they eat their own. They eat their own. You know, once, once they don't have any use to the, for them anymore. And they, and they all do that. We want to be separated from you or by, their, you know, oust you, whatever that, when you, when you don't have any, they don't have use for you anymore. I mean, listen, say what you want about the guy, uh, but Donald Trump used to be like a Democrat. He used to be loved by the liberals. He used to be like, instead of made fun of on the late night TV shows, he used to come to the late night TV shows. <laughs> they loved him. You know what he did? He kind of changed, got a little more conservative, and they ousted him and said, yeah, we hate you. They isolated him from the gang. This past week, we see the guy in charge of the cryptocurrency, Sam Bankman Freed, found guilty of fraud. He's going to get up to 110 years. Here's my question Was he alone? Was it just him? He contributed more than $100 million to politics. 70 million in 18 months to the Democrats and the liberal leaning groups. 40 of that million was of his own pocket. He's the second top donor behind only the face of the devil himself, George Soros. <laughs> second only to George. And this guy's going away for his life. You know what? He said, we don't have any use for you anymore. Bye. We don't, uh, we don't have nothing to do with this. No, I, we, I, we don't know, I don't know anything. 70 million, 40 million, 100 million? I, I don't know. I, don't, I didn't get any of that. No, I don't, not me, not me, not me. This is what happens when you number yourself with the transgressors. They'll have you ousted. Once they're done with you, the problem is you don't belong with the transgressors. They don't want you. They, they, they're like, you, you got to conform. You're not going to conform totally. You got to be isolated. Get away. Now you become a man without a country, so to speak. Where do I fit in? Where do I belong? This is a lot of the crises that we do have today for young people. 
I don't know where I fit in. I don't know where I belong. I, I don't know. I feel weird. I feel funny. I have a bad relationship with my parents. My home is broken. I, people make fun of me. They bully me. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I just don't know where I belong. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Listen, the answer is not to give them surgery. <laughs> they need love. They're being isolated. They're getting deadly counsel. Christians, a Christian, if you go to college, you go to secular college, and I understand that there's tracks to go to get a career and all that, and I'm not saying I'm opposed to that. But listen, if you go to secular college, stay home and get in church to balance it. You go away and there's no church and no, no place spiritually to temper everything. Uh, you're going to feel isolated like you don't belong. And you're either going to have to conform to the nonsense, which many people do, or you're going to have to say, this isn't for me, I've got to get back with the fellowship of the believers. Your support system. And that's what you need to do if you feel isolated today. If that's you, you need to feel you need to get back to the fellowship of the believers that you left for some reason and count it a blessing. Count it a blessing that the transgressors showed their true colors and abandoned you. You might be looking at it all wrong. Listen, you might be looking at it all wrong when I back, back to things like nobody likes me, nobody loves me, they pick on me, they're this, they're that, they're other, you know what? You might be looking at it all wrong. Maybe I'm doing something right. Maybe it's not me. It's likely them. You know why? Because here's what Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 22. Listen carefully now. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and, they, and when they shall separate you from their company. Blessed are ye when they separate you from their company, isolate you, and shall reproach you. That's what we say. This is what happened to him with the transgressors. They reproached him. He was a reproach to them. And shall reproach you, cast your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake, because you believe. He says, Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. Behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. This is to the extreme of uh, people being martyred for their faith to that extreme, and to people being isolated, alienated, picked on, and all the other things because of their faith. Blessed are ye. Blessed are ye. God's paying attention. Count it a blessing if the transgressors don't like you. <laughs> If they hate you, if they separate you from their company, if they reproach you, if they call you evil because of your faith in him, rejoice in that day. Don't conform. Don't conform. Consider the source. Well, maybe I should find common ground with these people. With the transgressors? Is that really what we should do? Get away from them. Get back to the family of God. Assemble with them. Fellowship with them. Rejoice with them. Minister with them. There's no need to be isolated from them. Where are you going to go in the United States of America today? I know we're not the only ones. But where are you going to go see these beautiful young teenagers singing their hearts out to the Lord? Where are you going to get that? With the transgressors? Are you going to get that in the CMA Awards? Are you going to get that on America's Got Talent? I don't think so. I don't think so. There's a place for them. The believer should never have to feel alone, forsaken, abandoned, isolated from the body of Christ. And if you know anyone like that, that feels that way, reach out to them and hold their hand and pull them up. Nobody should feel that way. Reach out and offer help. 
couple times this past week. One, I stay in contact with a young man who was raised in a Christian home, and he's here, and he's here, and he's, he's in this area, and he doesn't have family with him. He doesn't have much support. He's here for different reasons. And you know what? I just, from time to time, I know who he is. From time to time, reach out to him. From time to time, I take him to lunch. From time to time, I want him to know that I love him and I care about him. I don't want him to feel isolated. I know he feels isolated. He's numbered with the transgressors. I sent somebody a text this week. I said, hey, man, don't give up. I know you're struggling in sin. I know you are. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give in. Let me reach out. Let me help pull you out. I don't want him to feel isolated. I don't want him to feel like there's nobody that cares about him. I don't want that. That's what the transgressors do. If there's anyone in here this morning and you feel like a man without a country, a woman without a country, please let me pray for you. Let me help you. Jesus was numbered with the transgressors, so we don't have to be. They gave him a false label. You know what they'll do to you? They'll give you a false label. Old labels that you may have once had before you came to Christ, but not the label that God gives you. Jesus was numbered with the transgressors, and they got him railed on. They railed on him, his belief system. Don't get your counsel from the transgressors. Be careful what books you read. Be careful who you listen to, who you watch. Listen, entertainers are entertainers, and they're well paid for it. Just because they're famous and rich and popular, don't get your counsel from them. What's wrong with you? Don't get your counsel from the transgressors. And then, being number of the transgressors, Jesus was, he was isolated. We'll see next, next week, we'll see, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? You talk about trying to feel, feeling isolated and abandoned and all that. But count it a blessing. You know, it's a blessing to me. When I walk into a room of, I don't know, unsaved people, go to pray in an event, go to a hospital to visit, whatever I find myself in, and they're a little uncomfortable, and they think I'm a little weird, and all those other things, you know what? That's a blessing to me. And I'm like, I'm glad I don't live in the middle of these people. <laughs> it's a blessing. Count it a blessing. I don't say, I treat me, I go home, Amy, they treat me so poorly. <laughs> they don't like me. <laughs> you should have seen the faces they made at me. <laughs> I couldn't care any less. I couldn't care any less. Count it a blessing. Count it a blessing. Let's remember that Jesus Christ was placed right smack in the middle of some of the worst transgressors of the day. Why? How does it make him feel? What does he think when you, as a believer, as his disciple, as his follower, as a Christian, put yourself right in the middle of him today? Transgressor? Transgressor? Transgressor. Isn't this great? I don't think so. He's not going to bless that. He's not going to bless you. He's not going to bless your life. Now, you separate from that stuff, count it a blessing. Separate from that foolishness. You live a Christian life. 
the way you're supposed to, sanctified meat for the master's use. And you'll be blessed. And you'll be blessed. No matter if I'm isolated from them, no matter if I'm railed on from them, no matter if I'm labeled from them, won't matter. Won't matter. What matters is what we do for Christ. What we do for Christ. Now, Lord, we thank you for the time together this morning. And as we close the service, and as we sing this last song, God, I pray that we could reflect just a few minutes, just a little bit about what has been spoken, what has been read. More importantly, God, what you say in your word and what we could do better with these things, Lord, how we could be better, how we can be obedient to your call, how we can be sanctified, set apart, fit for the master's use now. We ask you to bless, bless each and every person, the decisions that they have to make. Lord, I pray for anyone here this morning. They may not know Jesus as their Savior. Maybe they've never been born again. Maybe they've never accepted Christ. God, maybe they feel, even this morning, they do not even know where they would go when they die. They're not 100% sure. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would speak to their heart. I pray you'd give them the courage and the boldness to acknowledge those things and to seek more information with other Christians, Lord, with myself, with other people that can help them know for sure from the Word of God that they can be saved, that they can know Christ and God, that they can have a seat in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand. Please grab your songbook. We're going to turn to number 118. Have thine own way, Lord. Number 118. Mike Bredo Jr., will you come up and close this in prayer, sir? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your blessings. Lord, thank you for uh, reaching out to us. Lord, thank you for taking our place on the cross. I pray, God, that we'll just uh, be mindful of that as we go today. Lord, protect us as we go. Help us to be uh, considerate of the things we do and the places we go and the way we speak to each other. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen.